five energies of the template video and all five energies of the query video. So you compare five of them, then you simply add them. Yes, 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 yes. So for every for every correlation, what I get is one correlation volume, which indicates the similarity between both those between both those videos. Now, uh, although this video is is very uh, what do you call it? Mm, although this video is a good measure of similarity between the between the template and the query video. A lot of the part of this video is is I mean it does not really convey anything. Like these parts of the video is just is just blank. It's not saying anything about what's really happening there. So in order to describe or in order to like get a good description of this correlation surface, what we do is we do something called as max pooling here. Max pooling basically involves forming a quad tree over a, a forming an octree tree over a three dimensional volume. So. What I'm doing here is initially I'm consider if, if this was my correlation volume, if this was like x, y, and my t axis, then uh, max pooling is basically I pick out the max value when at, at this resolution. Then in the next in the next one I uh, increase I I increase the resolution and I and I and I pick out max values from. Uh, eight different parts, and then again I split it up into like each block gets split up into eight more cubes, and eventually. So basically, what's happening over here is, in the entire of, I mean, in in the whole of this correlation video or correlation volume, I am picking only those values which contribute max to a maximum extent or which convey to a maximum extent this amount of similarity between the template and the query video. So everything else that's superfluous gets uh, chucked out. So yeah, max pooling is, is just a simple method that we use to like uh, pick out, uh, you know, pick out the most contributing or the most contributive uh, values in my uh, in my correlation volume. And the final stage in in the entire action bank method of classification is what I do is these values are uh, I mean like a feature descriptor for every action is composed of a concatenation of these. Uh, max pooled values for every action detector in the action bank and this together gives you one feature description for a particular action. Now like if you're, if you're training on a particular data set we simply take this feature representation and pass it through an SVM, a simple off the shelf SVM like any linear SVM and uh, that's, that's basically how we do our classification. So just to go through again like you know the details of how we, of, of what we, I mean just an overview of what we just spoke about. An input video goes through each of these action detectors in the action bank and it gives you a bunch of detection volumes. That's the correlation surfaces that we just saw. From each of these correlation volumes, we pick out the most important and the most contributive values. And all of these values concatenated together gives you one feature representation which eventually gets used by the SPM. This is the whole of action bank in, in, in one image. Is there, are there any questions? So eventually the representation is a long vector. Is a? Is a what? Is a long vector. Right? Is a row vector, yes. Like in my case I have 205 templates in my action bank and each of those templates gets uh, max pooled as, a, as, as an off tree. So I get 73 values per 205 action bank. Uh, so it's, so per it's a long vector then putting, uh, in putting to the SVM. SVM, yes. So the vector is about 19,000 something and odd long. So each action gets represented by one row vector, which is which is like really long. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, I had a few discussions with one of my lab mates, David, and uh, we did a, a simple experiment to see if actually all I mean nineteen thousand dimensions for one action is is a lot, right? So we did a small experiment and we saw actually how many of those nineteen thousand are actually uh, you know the most significant, and we we found a relatively smaller number as compared to the actual size of the vector. So, like future experiments that I'll be doing would be is to you know we look at the the let's say the 500 most significant features among those 19,000 long uh, feature vector and we use that for classification. So that will significantly reduce the computational load that we uh, incur because of this process. So one question is, uh, in terms of are there constraints on the types of actions in the template? I, I get the sense that the actions have to be highly that there's a lot of motion for it to be able to sort of, for your printers to be able to pick it up, for the MMT to reflect. If you had subtle motion, if you had, uh, 
Can you can you give me an example? So you're more or less standing still. Okay. You're not doing large motions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you? Then Katzbrenner is not in the room. We don't really know ontologically if standing still is an action or not. Okay. okay. Something like playing chess, but, maybe. No, I would, but but to answer, uh, maybe I'm, I'm not going to try to answer this question. I would I would say I mean no no that's not an answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, have you? Do you see some? classes of videos mm -hmm. perform better? Yeah. Uh, I mean, speaking from the vision point of view, I don't really think people are interested in in detection of, I mean, in detecting actions where you define uh, also the not, actions. Also not an answer. Some of us would do better than that. Okay. <laughs> well, let's return to the question at the end, because actually the, our, in two of the three data sets that we tried from, the worst results we get are on walking. I believe might be the least dynamic of the classes. However, I would not think that there's any particular constraint that requires a significant amount of motion because um, even micro motions or small motions will be picked up in some to some degree by these different action bound templates. And then added to the, this final 19,000 whatever dimension max pool vector. And then the classifiers would sit on top of that, right? So it seems, it seems as long as m much of the training data for that class similarly exhibits small a small degree of motion, it should, it should kind of flow through the, the system. I, I guess I can maybe even qualify my question a little bit. As a percentage, so when you think of the effort matching and when you think <coughs> of the energy that you were throwing in there, how much of that energy is as a percentage of the uh, of this of this kick of the image? Okay. Did that matter? Is the question. So you could of course zoom into a very fine action and still get some of these. So how much of like uh, so I mean just so that I get your question right, uh, you're trying to know how much of each. Uh, motion like let me, let me so you had shown this picture where they are at that point for example not that one okay let's talk about this no no a little further down you've shown one where you've collected the energy was it this? yeah okay. the coordination surface so mm -hmm. how as a percentage of the overall screen uh, of the image my image my question was Oh, are you trying to see if this method is scale independent? Yes. Okay, action spotting is uh, not entirely robust to scale. That's why for action bank, we try to involve different action, I mean, different instances of the same action at different scales, at different viewpoints, and so on. Like the only way we are trying to make this method as robust as possible is by including as many diverse, I mean, different examples as possible. That's a, like a rich action bank would like an ideal action bank would consist of all possible variations in which one one piece of motion can be represented. So, so I think you're actually five energy. Uh, yes. Orientation. Probably you can add another one, the energy of scale here. Okay. No, but how does scale have anything to do with motion? The decomposition relates to decomposition of the motion, no matter what yeah, scale for it example, is. For example, in, in, this, in these two cases, right? Mm -hmm. Suppose the, the template view is, um, is a large scale, uh, not, not in terms of size. I mean, the size is much bigger than the curve. Right. How do you match them? How do you do Yeah, so this them? method, again, will fail in such an instance. Yeah, I know, but yeah. in training, in the action plan, uh -huh. my suggestion is if you can you know, define different So what Anand failed to mention is that uh, he applies the action bank at one scale, yeah. and then at another scale, uh -huh. and then at, at perhaps at a third scale. We've, we've only tried two scales. But so he'll take the, a 19,000 dimension feature vector uh -huh. for the original scale of activity, and then halve the size of the video, uh -huh. which essentially means doubling the size of the action bank template, and get a whole other 19,000 dimension vector, uh -huh. and treat that as the output okay. of action bank. So, so indeed, we've, so we've, we've tried to incorporate robustness to scale 